Oh my god, look at all the cobia behind the boat. Oh my god. Got a cobia! There he goes! All the Ryoga! Let's see. I only got a 20 pound leader on here and I've been goofing around with this thing. I only got a 20 pound mono leader. Get ready to go in and I dropped the steel shad over the side and I'm hooked up. I'm hooked up on the steel shad out in the middle of the desert on a little pile of bait. Steel shad, the famous Amazon lure. On the Ryoga and the Daiwa beef stick. He's smoking it. He's smoking me. He's smoking me. He just popped it. The whole thing's gone. Gone? Gone. Well, after my last video, uh, I, in that video, I used this. This is sort of, and I made reference to it, I think, in that video a little bit, uh, as the world-famous Amazon lure. And the reason I said that is because these are just very promoted on Amazon. This is, of course, the Steel Shad. This is the largest one they make. It's a supposed two ounce. It's got a kind of a belly weighted uh, lead here, as you can see. Very interesting lure. You know, there's things that just trigger me. And I'll tell you what they are. Simple and metal and effective. And this lure, as you saw in my last video, which was kind of just flying by the seat of my pants, I was out there um, with Richard, a good customer, and, you know, I had my Daiwa Ryoga with me and a beef stick. And I was playing with my homemade, like, gotcha lures that I called the jerk jiggers. And I caught a small cobia on one and hooked up another fish and lost the whole lure. And then I pulled out one of my steel shads. And to go into a little bit of detail that maybe wasn't on the video is we were actually heading in. And we went over a hump in the bottom. And that hump, I of course marked. I saved that spot. Saved a lot of spots that day. Because going along just kind of slow trolling with my uh, 15 horsepower Merc Pro Kicker, you really get to just pick up a lot of little spots on the bottom, which you should normally. Anytime you're trolling offshore, you should be able to find a whole bunch of new spots. So we went over a little hump off of the main reef area. And it had a little stack of bait on it. Just a little stack of bait. And I grabbed my Daiwa Ryoga and my 7-foot casting beef stick. And I had this on. And, and I chucked it over the side and this vibrates on the way down. It goes on the way down. And I no sooner hit down on near the bottom and stroked it up and got my butt handed to me. Who the heck knows what it was? I don't know. But in the video, I had my largest 2025 bay jigging Daiwa Ryoga just smoked down to three quarters of the spool was gone with 30 pound braid. Now I had that 30 pound braid tied to nothing but uh, 
uh, uni knot with 20 pound mono, maybe 30. And I don't know if it had a bunch of nicks in it or whatever. But after an extensive little fight there, the leader broke and I lost one of my steel shads. And it was funny because Richard kept saying, oh, you lost another lure, Dave. Oh, you lost a lure. And I mean, like I said in the video, even I said, you know, we buy these things just to lose them, you know. So this is such a simple lure. You know, I mean, bass fishing guys, you know, they've, there's tons and tons of sort of vibrating lures. Here's one from Australia, a Reflecta. Sort of the same situation. It's, it's different because the whole thing is weighted. But it's got this flat front. And I've got these in all sizes. You can't buy these anymore. I bought this. I bought a whole package of Reflectolores via, these are Dennis Braid. I mean, they come out, let's see, it says Reflector right there. But that's sort of another vibrator for like trolling, right? Everybody's seen a lure this size. But these steel shads are just so cool. I mean, when you, when you have it tied off to this spot right here, and I've, it comes with the split ring, but I added the ball bearing swivel and this quick snap. All right, because what I'm gonna show you is how I'm going to actually rig this to be able to do what I just did in that video all over again on another slick, calm day even if I have to go out myself. They got these single siwash hooks. They look like uh, VMC permasteels. Very adequate, very adequate hooks. And I believe I've got these on my Amazon Tools of the Trade page. This is the largest. They go all the way down to little tiny 3 8 ounce ones. But talk about a versatile lure. You control it. You can see you can jig it because as you pull up on it from this pull point right there, it really just vibrates like crazy. And like I said, on the fall, it shimmies all the way down. Kind of really indestructible. You know, it's nothing more than a piece of steel with stickers on it, two holes drilled up here hole drilled hole drilled and the lead is melted on i mean these people have really you know kind of come up with something i don't know the whole entire story of the people who manufacture this but what a killer lure but i'm going to show you how i'm going to rig it next this next time because of the fact I just really kind of screwed up. I mean, that was all flying by the seat of my pants just because I don't go many places without my Ryoga and something to cast. So, this is what I'm doing next time around. I added this ball bearing swivel right here. Then I went to one of these quick change... Uh, not a snap, but a quick change. I guess you'd call it a snap. Then, I'm hoping you can see this. Then I went to like 45 or maybe 60 pound single strand, just because I got it. And then from the single strand, I go about uh, uh, 16, 18 inches here. Then I went to an Albright special on the wire. This is kind of a unique knot. You take your wire and you fold it over and you do an Albright around it and you tighten it up. Okay, the tag end I burned 
with my braid cutting little lighter here. Got this slot in it and I, I burned the end and stubbed it off right, right in there. Then after that, I basically take the tag end that was sticking out and I do a couple barrel wraps just on the end, creating a little pump handle and then I break it off flush. As you can see, there's nothing to grab you. So then, unlike I did before, I'm going now to like 40 pound mono. All right. And I use a good long piece of that for like shock leader. And then I went to, here's heavy braid. It's, I believe it's 60 pound braid. I got this doubled. And then I go to a uni down here. And then I got a double line surgeon's loop going from the doubles to, a, to the single. And it seems like a lot, but you got to realize one thing that when you're out there, you know, you're dealing with shark, you're dealing with kudas, you're dealing with king mackerel. Um, I don't know what that last fish was. I don't know. Uh, that's the neat thing about just taking something like this and dropping it to the bottom offshore. You just don't really know what you're going to get that was lurking around down there. But I'm trying to save it, the lure, by putting the wire on here. And I'm going to try this again. But next time, I'm going with my Daiwa beef stick because it's got some beautiful action. It just has a wonderful action. Here's the Daiwa beef stick rod. It's upside down. Um, Daiwa beef stick. It's not a trigger rod. But next time around, I'm going with my Jigging Master Level Wind. And if you're a subscriber, you've seen me talk about this reel before. This is a really badass reel. It's level Wind Lever Drag. So, right there, right there is a perfect thumbnail for this video. Yep, that's a perfect thumbnail right there. Maybe take this out. Maybe put my Dennis Braid angler tool back here. Very unique, very unique set of pliers for opening hook eyes. All right. So I just wanted to follow up because I learned real quick that what I was doing out there that day was just flying by the seat of my pants. They're going to, obviously, since I had a couple hookups on this lure, they're just really, they're, they're striking it because of the vibration and the flash I don't believe there were kudas that I had hooked up because many times the kudas will jump. I don't know. You really don't know. But I will be doing that again if I have to even go out there myself on a calm day and just drop these down on humps and reefs with a stack of bait, just like butterfly jigging. Except this seems to be a little better, I believe, than butterfly jigging. It's a little more versatile. I control this. I can bomb it. I can cast it. All right. And it goes to the bottom relatively quick, has action on the way to the bottom. So the steel shad, I'm 
very fascinated by it and really didn't use them until you saw what I did in that video just a couple times and I didn't highlight it by any means. But maybe next time I get a nice slick day, I'm going to run out there and I'm going to drop this down on a bunch of different spots. I mean, there's all those baby cobia were around. Oh my God. Every time we slowed the boat down and we're messing with something, like we got a lot of line caught in my kicker prop that day just because we had a fish eat a bait and he went streaking up under the boat. Could have been something like a bonita or something because it was so fast. The line got caught in the kicker prop like instantly, instantly when the rod went, it was in the prop that quick. Bonita have a way of doing that on a downrigger. They can go the complete opposite way in which you want them to sometimes. I've had Benita wrap us around downrigger cables and stuff back in the old days. So, there you go. This is just a little follow-up and talking about something that is very unique. And that's the steel shad. Um, no promotion here. I'm not promoting it. I'm just showing you what I found to be really interesting. I've spent huge money on a bunch of these. They're not super cheap. I probably have $70 maybe invested in a bunch of these. You get them like, um, I believe you get a two pack for about 19 bucks or 19 something. You can find them on Amazon. I got them on my Amazon Tools of the Trades page. You can go to their website. They got them at Bass Pro, all that kind of stuff. They're around. This company is doing things right. They're doing things right. You can find these everywhere. And I guess they catch everything from bass to musky, uh, bottom fish, snapper, grouper, you name it. They catch them. So, very interesting lure and thought I'd just do a little follow-up. So thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one. And maybe the next one will be me getting my butt handed to me once again. But I don't think so, because next time, it's going to be the Wiki Reel. The Jiggin' Master Wiki Reel. This thing is so powerful and strong. Ah, God, I love it. Wiki Jigging by Jigging Master. What am I? Besides the Daiwa Ryogas, this is the real. So, I'll see you next time.